Okay, I don't actually think I've talked about this much on this podcast. It's about barrier to entry. Sorry, I was wiping off. I've got some I've got blood on my face. God knows how I've got blood on my face. Anyway, we're talking about barrier to entry. And I talk about this loads in my private life. Um, and for me, I think barrier to entry, when there's a barrier to entry, it only means it's worth doing. Um, I'll give you a real quick example. And I'll get into it. Uh, I'm trying to find all my notes here now. All right, so a barrier to entry for me is a cost of doing something. And the higher the cost of doing something, the more you should do it. So I'll read my notes and I'll give you an example. If it was easy, everyone would do it. This is called the barrier to entry. Very few people are willing to do it. If people aren't willing to do it, it means you should be. Be the difference. Be different. I love that. And what, so for example, in work, the barrier to entry, the barrier to entry in work was, uh, money in, in my stories. I, I see, I see what, what, what some people describe as a problem, a hurdle for me is going to be your moat. It's your barrier to entry. And that moat, that barrier will protect you. So for example, when we opened Stormall, we had to borrow an ungodly amount of money, a million, but it's cost of a million pounds to set up. Uh, I didn't have a million pounds. So we had to borrow the banks from lenders of money. So we had to beg, steal and borrow from friends family, friends, 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 people we didn't know. And most people would say, no, that's a big barrier to entry. I aren't going to do it. We can't do it. But it's that, that wasn't the case. We was doing it. And <laughs> it's almost like we literally, ju- I jumped off a cliff and tried to build the airplane on the way down. Luckily, I built the airplane on the way down because at the start of it, when I started this, I never had that money. I never had the people lend me, willing to lend me the money. And so that was, that's a barrier to entry. Now, anybody who wants to compete with me on in Stormore, they have to have put up a million pound. If they want to compete and have the same sort of facility, it's going to be a million pound. And don't get me wrong, I know a lot of people have a million pound, but a lot of people don't. More people don't than do. And so therefore, that barrier to entry, that cost to enter the market was my moat. It's now my moat. It's now my protection. So that hardship has now become my protection. So what you consider a barrier to entry will later protect you if you get over that barrier to entry. In relationships, when you go through hard times, when you go through the bad things, that's the barrier to entry. That is your moat. You are, you, when you go through something testing with your, with a family member or with a partner or a friend, you're building, you're building a bridge, you're building a fort, you're building a fort around you, around your relationship. So just because it's hard, it doesn't mean you should stop. Just because it's hard, it doesn't mean you should stop. If it was easy, my friends, every single person out there would be doing it. So that goes to if you're a doctor studying at at university, yes, it's hard but that's your barrier. That becomes your moat because when you're older, you will always, always have a job. And I'm, I'm saying, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want a job. It's not for me. And I don't, but it's, I, don't, I was going to say, I don't want my kids to have a job, but I want whatever they want. And so if you are, if you are a university and that, that's your most, that's going to be your, but that's going to protect you because very, very few people are going to be doctors because they don't want to put in seven years and all the costs associated with that. So that is your barrier. And so anything you're going through right now, and it's hard, it's testing that will become your fault later on in life. And I think it's a wonderful concept. All right, my friends, thank you tomorrow. Uh, thank, thank you tomorrow. <laughs> I'll say thank you so much. And then I'm going to say tomorrow. And I said, thank you tomorrow. Thank you tomorrow. We, <laughs> excuse me. We will be talking about L Nightingale's story. Oh yeah, really good. Oh yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. And um, do you know what? So many people can learn from tomorrow's episode, especially in my family, especially in my family. It's a really, really, really good episode. And um, yeah, it's an L. Nightingale story, and it's about putting the present first, I think is the best way of explaining it. Anyway, listen to it tomorrow. It's really good. Um, but I'll, I'll touch you all the time. I, as you can tell, I really, really like this. And it, it kind of frustrates me when other people don't see the world the same way as I do. And I'm going to make a perfect case for it tomorrow because, um, yeah, it frustrates me. All right, guys. Love you. Appreciate you. See you soon.